present a thoracic endovascular aortic repair for a symptomatic type B intramural hematoma. This patient was a 66-year-old woman who presented with sudden onset sharp back pain. Her past medical history included hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, obstructive sleep apnea, and former tobacco use. She presented hypotensive with hemoglobin of 8, but hemodynamically stabilized with fluid resuscitation. CT scan revealed extensive descending aortic intramural hematoma with posterior hemomediastinum and a large right hemothorax. No intimal dissection flap was evident. The patient was planned for an emergent thoracic endovascular aortic repair for a type B aortic intramural hematoma with rupture. Prior to the procedure, aortic stent graft landing zones at the level of the left subclavian artery and the celiac artery had diameters of 29 millimeters and 25 millimeters respectively. On an adjusted center line analysis, treatment length was 218 millimeters. Thoracic endovascular aortic repair was done in a hybrid operating room under general anesthesia. Surgical exposure of the right femoral artery was done through a 3 centimeter longitudinal incision. Percutaneous femoral access on the contralateral side was obtained under ultrasound guidance and a 5 French sheath and pigtail catheter were introduced for angiographic imaging. Over a curved Lunderquist wire, a 22 French gore dry seal sheath was advanced through the right femoral artery to the abdominal aorta. Initial aortography demonstrated no ongoing contrast extravasation or any site suspicious for rupture. It did identify the origin of the left subclavian artery, the origin of the celiac artery, and a pair of large spinal arteries just above the celiac. First, a 28 by 150 millimeter gore C tag endograft was advanced through the sheath and deployed immediately above these spinal arteries. Next, a 31 by 150 millimeter gore C tag endograft was advanced through the first stent. It was advanced beyond the origin of the left subclavian and withdrawn to its landing zone to release any stored tension in the system. It was deployed immediately distal to the left subclavian artery with 5 to 7 centimeters of overlap with the first stent. No balloon molding was done. In this urgent rupture case, image guidance was done with simple markings on the projection monitor. In more elective settings, image fusion or image overlay are helpful options. Completion aortography demonstrated good positioning of the endographs without endoleak or other complications. The patient made an uneventful recovery and spent five days in the hospital. Surveillance CT imaging at one in three months follow-up revealed no endoleak and continued aortic remodeling. In the setting of aortic rupture, expeditious stent graft repair is paramount. As with classic type B dissections, repair should not oversize the stent graft more than 10% larger than the native aorta. Proximal and distal landing zones should consist of normal appearing aorta, which can be difficult to obtain in extensive IMH. In any rupture of the descending thoracic aorta, stent graft coverage from the left subclavian to the celiac artery is indicated. Although distinct from classic type B dissections with true and false lumen, type B IMH carries a similar risk for aortic rupture. It is therefore recommended that symptomatic or complicated IMH be treated similarly to classic type B dissection.